Hi, and welcome to Pet Problem Solved. I'm Dr. Jo Rigetti. And this, I'm very excited to say, is the first in our Pet Problem Solved video and podcast specials, where we interview people who are doing exciting things in the pet industry. Have you heard of Dogs Connect? Have you? <laughs> well, we all know the benefits that dogs bring to our lives physical benefits, mental health benefits. They just de-stress us, make us feel better about life. Well, Dogs Connect is an organization that is using those benefits that our canine companions can give us. And I'm going to chat with Grant Shannon. Hi Grant, thanks for being on Pet Problem Solved. Tell us a little bit about your business, Dog Connect, and of course your background, how you came to be involved in this business. G'day Dr. Joe, thanks for inviting me on to your podcast for a chat. I've had lots of different lives, if you like, in this life, but in relation to this program, I was a teacher for 15 years in the primary setting. And I worked with kids on a level where I felt really naturally, um, you know, the personal side of teaching was something that I enjoyed and, and I didn't have to work really hard at it. The relationships were something that I loved building and, and it, wasn't, it wasn't that the curriculum was my strong point so much as the relationships and naturally trying to support young people in, in their growth and their development at the primary age level. I loved it. I really enjoyed it. I gave it my all and I found it really exhausting too. So at one stage I think I was on the, on the brink of a serious burnout. And that was about the time where I was being challenged in my teaching career by some really tricky behaviours and some behaviours that involved violence, um, lack of empathy that young people were showing to each other. Um, pretty challenging stuff to deal with while you're trying to work with 26 or 27 other young people at the same time. So this is where the business started to evolve as an idea for me we started to talk about and think about in the educational setting using stories of dogs and picture storybooks with this particular group of young people to support them in developing empathy for others. Instantly my idea was, what about a real dog? So the storybook wasn't really going to cut it for me, I didn't think, but the connections that we could have maybe um, called on and, and introduced to these people through a real dog was potentially awesome in my idea from the very beginning and, and it just really sparked something in me and it's still there, the spark is still um, you know in, in many ways a raging fire and, and it's my passion and I love it but I think what's unique about this is we've been able to bring this idea into traditional education settings and support people not just students but staff and families through these beautiful connections that are developed with dogs so it happens naturally for a lot of people not everyone but I think the uniqueness of this is something that um, you know it hasn't been done a lot until now and and we really love that we're finding more opportunities to do it so how does dogs connect benefit people I think the benefits this question's great around what the benefits are because there's so many potentially there's so many and we're certainly finding out through scientific support and evidence there's more and more all the time in relation to dogs and people and very recently there's a, a research that came out around the dopamine release that people receive but the dog receives as well when a dog and a person who it's attached to and who, who it's connected to when they look each other in the eyes there's a, a really strong release of dopamine for each of them so we know that scientifically dogs can have impacts really naturally around reduced anxiety reduced heart rate reduced stress levels a lot of that stuff's been talked about for a while now but there's always new research coming out which i love the benefits that we see in what we do is we combine the connections with the dog with some really powerful learning around self-awareness, body language, leadership, communication, the escalation cycle. So once the connection's established, what I really love is that we can go further and we can use this connection as a real launch pad for some quality learning, some really powerful learning for, for not just young people, but for people in general. This stuff's really valuable in life. That's what I love about this. I think something that's really 
really interesting to me and that I'm really passionate about more recently is the impact that we can have through this level of work on the autonomic nervous system and on how trauma manifests in our bodies as behavior. So, and building my, one of my major passions in life is dogs, building this into this equation and into this balance of, of how we're supporting people is something that I absolutely love about, about what we're doing and what we're working on. And I feel like it's, it's gonna go forever. I love it. And do you think there are also benefits for dogs? I think the question around, does this benefit dogs is something that I'm asked Often, I, I was asked yesterday by um, a staff member in, in a particular setting, are the dogs happy to do this? And I think what I really love about this is, firstly, a little bit removed from the dogs themselves, but dogs are gaining some real genuine credibility in relation to what they do, and they do it naturally. They're so giving these breeds that we work with, so the Groodles, Labradoodles, we, we tend to work with dogs who have a, a low hypoallergenic rate, dogs that have a low shedding rate for obvious reasons, but these breeds not only are really, really clever, they enjoy connecting with lots and lots of people, they enjoy being led, they enjoy affection. So the credibility that, that these dogs are getting across the board for what they do so so much giving so naturally you know it's it's really great for me deep down i love that dogs are getting so much credibility as being worth so much more than just put in the backyard and fed twice a day from the perspective of the dogs i see it i see the joy in the dogs i see the dogs you know when they arrive at the workplace really happy to be there and, and keen to get in and see the people that are part of their really large pack. So it could be staff, it could be clients, students, could be patients in a hospital. I see every time that the dogs are really happy to be there and to connect and to do this. But certainly part of our work is to make sure that this is done in a way that, that supports dogs too and that doesn't deplete dogs and tax dogs and that's not toxic on dogs. And I, I reckon you'd know, Joe, and lots of your people who would be following you and listening or watching this would be aware of the fact that dogs will absorb a type of energy that they're around. They'll also reflect a certain type of energy. And, and it's not just a certain type, it's, it's what they're surrounded by. So we need to be really careful with these dogs that we don't inundate their systems. And part of my job is teaching people how to have a real gauge on that, what to look for, how to read it. and and the, that the dog's freedom of choice and well-being are number one for what we do. We operate in line with the international standards for animal assisted intervention so we've got a really close eye on the dogs and, and me personally uh, I'm naturally drawn to, to you know really looking after and maintaining a really high level of well-being for these dogs but it's, it's a great opportunity to teach people how to do this and to teach people that you know, this is what we need to do for these dogs. We need to make sure that they're happy. Could other pets be involved? Cats, chickens, horses? I think other pets that may be involved, you know, it happens with horses, it happens with birds, it happens with cats. You know, what we can do with animals in terms of connection is across the board. But what I really love about dogs is that they're socially structured in terms of their families and, and their groups and their packs, and even themselves, you know, they're structured in a way that we can relate to. It's quite similar in lots of ways to humans. Even when we look at the groodles that we're working with at the moment, their body language is something that we can not only learn about and observe, but we can relate to it in lots of ways. So I think dogs are great for this level of work that we're doing. I think definitely could do it with lots of other animals. And, you know, I think the potential is endless really. So. Yeah, I'd love to hear from people who are doing this sort of thing with, with any other type of animal. I know. What do you and Dogs Connect have planned for the future, Grant? The future for us, Joe, I think is about, well, it's about continuing this work and, and I feel that we've got this obligation to dogs and that we, that the future is that we try and find as many opportunities for them to do this work and to be conduits to this healing and learning and this journey for people that they can bring us along on. And I feel like, you know, this could be forever for me. Um, the future for this particular program is really exciting. We began in the education setting. 
we're moving into the healthcare setting, we're moving into the justice setting, we're moving into the aged care setting, and we're also developing programs with the intention of supporting frontline personnel like uh, firefighters, police, police people, ambulance people, anybody who's on that front line who you know, will undoubtedly be experiencing and, and linked to any level of trauma. You know, I think that's really exciting for us because we know that this is supportive, we know it's a solution, we know it's successful. So we're building and, and we're scaling and we're looking for other opportunities in other industries and they're coming our way so we're really excited about it. So the next six or 12 months is going to be really exciting and I look forward to keeping you in the loop around the progress and the different things that pop up that we're able to bring dogs to the table for and, and uh, well, not certainly not to the table as, as literally as it sounds, but. And how can people get involved or get further information on Dogs Connect? If anybody would like to find out more, they could go to the Dogs Connect website. People are also welcome to touch base with us on Facebook. Um, my details and, and email and phone number are on the website too. People can make contact in any way that suits them, but definitely go to the website and have a look and go from there. Um, Thank you so much for joining me, Dr. Joe Rigetti at Pet Problems Solved. Check out Dogs Connect at their website.